Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in my series on Python, right? In this video, we're going to talk about, we're going to start talking about three typical steps that all computer programs uh, go through. And that is uh, step one, a uh, computer program is going to receive input. Step two, a uh, computer program is going to process the input. And step three, the computer program is going to produce some kind of input, or excuse me, output. So over the next few videos, we'll take a look at these three steps and how we can address each one of these steps. Uh, but the first thing we'll talk about is how we can produce output or how we can display output to the screen. Earlier videos, you can kind of get a preview of this. But basically, what we want to do is we want to um, use uh, the print function to display our output. Display the program's output. Okay. And so, how can we uh, use that function? How does it how does it work? Right. Well, got my interactive over here. I got the Python shell open. But uh, you know, we can type print and then you know, hello world, right? Inside of uh, interactive mode, and what we see, hello oh, world, uh, going back, right? So here's one example of how to use the print function. Okay. So now, if we wanted to use print inside of our inside of our program, we could you know, do something like this. Or we just have multiple statements. You know, like print uh, makes like a, that's me, print, I live at uh, 123 Main Street, and I live in, you know, Vermont, uh, California. Vermont, California, um, you know, 92865, right? And uh, so if we put that inside our program, then we run our program, then what we see on you know, the screen? Well, there's one print statement, there's another print statement, there's another print statement. Okay, so um, the arguments that I sent to this print function are an example of a type of data inside of a Python program. And in this case, this type of data is a string literal, okay? Now, we can enclose string literals in single quotes as we've done here, but Python also allows you to use uh, double quotes, right? So I can do the exact same thing, right? But using double quotes. In street, moments. So I can do that and I can run my program and you know, we'll see the second set of information here. So we can use single quotes or we can use double quotes, not a problem. Okay, but what if we wanted to have a single quote, right? What if we wanted our output to have some kind of quote? What I mean is, what if I want to um, type something that looks like this, right? Well, what if I wanted something that looks like that? Well, then we can just combine the two. We can combine double quotes and single quotes. And so we can use it like this. Can't stop. Anything. Right. And so the single quote is embedded inside of the double quotes here, and Python um, can figure out what you want to do based off of that. Okay. And then similarly, if we wanted to enclose double quotes inside and, and as part of our string, we could do that too by using single quotes. Um, I said hello there. Right? <clears throat> and we can see now that, see how we have single quotes on the outside and the double quotes on the inside. Python correctly um, interprets which you want there as well. But we're not finished just yet. Python will allow you to use triple quotes as well. So now I can do something like this. Right? I could um, split the lines up. Uh, this way by using triple quotes, right? So hello uh, there world, something like that, right? So by using triple quotes, I can split this line up, right? And so here's my three lines all split up. Okay, so you've seen um, you've seen me use these hashtags, right? Well, it looks like hashtags in my program, and basically these hashtags 
representing comments in the code, right? You probably know what comments are from other programs, but or from other programming languages. But if you don't know, um, this Python supports line comments where anything that um, follows the hashtag, the pound sign here on the same line, it just gets ignored uh, by the Python shell by the interpreter, right? So uh, comments commonly programmers, you know, will include little notes within their programs uh, for other programmers or to remind themselves of something later on. That, again, as I said, they're completely ignored by the by the interpreter by the Python shell purely for human consumption. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit briefly about uh, variables. Okay, so what is a variable? Okay. Variables. Okay, a variable, basically, it's a name that we give to some um, memory location inside your computer, right, where we're going to store some kind of data, right? So, a name for a memory location, okay? So, how do we create variables? We can create them by using assignment statements, right? And what does that look like? Well, I could say something like... Um, Oh, um, number of zombies killed, right? I can say, well, there's uh, been 10 zombies killed so far, okay? And so what do I have there, right? I have a new memory location that's going to store this number that I just assigned to it, 10, right? And equals is the assignment operator. And so now some memory location has got 10 assigned to it, and I'm referring to that memory location with this same number of zombies killed. Okay, so I can print, or I can display the contents of that memory location to the screen by using the print function, right? So I'll just pass as an argument to the print function, number of zombies killed, right? And let me get this extra stuff out of the way because this is all uh, noise at this point, right? We've moved on to bigger and better things. So let me compile and run this, what we're gonna see on the screen, right? Not compile, we'll just run the module, send it to the interpreter. See 10, right? I passed number of zombies killed to my, um, to the shell, right? We can also use variables inside the shell, right? Inside in interactive mode, I can do something like, um, like this, I could say, um, Base equals 10, right? And I can say height equals 25, okay? And then I can print out those, uh, the contents of those memory locations, right? I can say print base, okay? There's my 10. I can say print, print height, and there's my height uh, value, okay? Um, make sure that you keep in mind, though, that we have to pass the name of the variable to the print function, right? If you were to put the name of the variable inside of quotes, well, now we're not passing the variable anymore, we're passing a string literal, right? So what we'll, what we'll see here is we'll actually see you know, that uh, we're printing the word base, right, instead of the variable, okay? So putting those quotes around changes what we're actually trying to print out, okay? All right, so let's uh, write a program that demonstrates using a variable, All right? So we've got our number of zombies killed, and then let's have ourselves a, uh, another print function inside of here, print call, print, um, I've killed, I've killed this many zombies, right? And so um, when I've done that, I have two print statements, and well, let's just let's just see what we see, right? It's going to show on the screen that uh, you know I've killed this many zombies, and how many did I kill? I killed ten, right? So I've killed this many zombies, ten. Okay. All right. Now keep in mind that the name when we're doing when we're assigning values to variables, the name of the variable has to go on the left hand side, right? Not the number. We can't, you know, right? We have number of zombies killed. We're assigning ten to number of zombies killed. We can't reverse the order there, right? We can't do something like this, for example. Right, that's gonna give us an error. Right? Can't assign to a literal. 
Okay, we have to assign values or literals to variables, not the other way around. Okay, just a couple more things for this video, then we'll then we'll uh, wrap it up here. Um, another thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to assign a value to a variable, right? This isn't like other languages like uh, C or Java where you can define the variable and then assign something to it later, right? We have to say number of zombies killed equals 10. We have to initialize that variable. You don't get to just declare a variable without assigning anything to it, right? Um, what's going to happen if I try just to say number of zombies killed? There's no value there. There's nothing inside of it. So Python says, well, I mean, that would be garbage, but Python says, no, sorry, you don't get to, you don't get to do that, right? So number of zombies killed, not defined. Variables not defined until you've actually initialized it with something, okay? Okay, so let me finish up with just giving you some uh, rules for variables and what you can name them. Um, so the rules for variables in Python are similar to rules for uh, naming in variables in any other language, really. It shouldn't be anything new here. Uh, a couple of things that I'll just throw at you. Um, can't use keywords, right? So we'll say rules of naming Python variables, right? Oops, variables. Okay, so can't use keywords as variable names, right? Keywords are, are words that are reserved by the language for specific uses. For example, if, while, um, you know, um, for, right? Um, just like any other language where you have certain names that are reserved by the language, right? So you can't use keywords and variable names. Okay, another uh, rule, can't contain spaces. Okay, so what does that mean? Something like this, number of zombies killed, right? This right here, not a valid variable name. No spaces allowed in the um, variable name. Okay, and number three, okay. Uh, after the first character, you can use alpha numeric characters, right? So after the first character, you can use alpha numeric, numeric characters, right? What does that mean? Well, it means, you know, characters like A, B, you know, Z, 1, right? These are all valid after the uh, first character, right? Underscores also. Okay. Uh, otherwise, the first character has to be um, upper or lowercase. Um, upper or lowercase characters or an underscore. So here's some valid examples. Okay. Gross pay, valid. Obviously, number of zombies killed, valid. Underscore dog, uh, valid. Um, cat, one, two, three, valid, okay. What's some example of uh, invalid variable names? Um, let's see here, invalid. Invalid would be something like one, two, three, cat, um, using an exclamation point. Um, Stuff like this, right? Invalid. <coughs> okay. And last but not least, the language is case sensitive. Okay, what does that mean? That means that um, number of zombies killed and number of zombies killed are not the same. Okay. All right. So I think that um, that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, next series of videos, we're going to continue talking about printing and using and using variables and uh, getting input um, from the keyboard, from the console, from the user. Okay. So 
I hope that uh, you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to uh, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, like button, and uh, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section, good, bad, or different. Okay? All right, until next time, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you later.